Um, the title of my talk is, is Why Gender Matters, and it does. It does. That's the simple answer. Um, when one has a baby, or when you hear someone having a baby, what's the first question you usually ask when, someone, when you hear that someone's just had a baby? Boy right, boy or girl. So when I had my twins, um, that was what people asked me all the time. What did you have? And I was very tempted to say kittens, puppies, <laughs> mangoes. What did, what did you have? I, 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 had, ba I had, ba had two babies. Um, now, if you look at this picture, can you tell what there is a girl and a boy, by the way? Can you tell which one's a girl and which one's a boy? This is the girl? This is a girl? This is a boy? Are you sure? No. You're not really sure? No. Yeah. Okay, how about now? Yeah. Now, why are you sure now? Because she's wearing a dress and she has a bow in her hair. So this is actually my daughter Phoebe and it's my son Griffin. Um, and what we do day one, day two, day three, is we actually go out of our way to make sure people understand who's who. Not necessarily for our own benefit, and not necessarily because she's more feminine than he is, or he's more masculine than she is. But people get very, they're a little awkward, especially if you have a gender neutral name. People be like, good for them. Um, they, want, they want a pronoun, they want to find a pronoun. So I actually found that dressing them in a very gendered way was actually for other people's benefit. Mm -hmm. So that when people said, oh, you're, they're so cute. Well, um, what, what are they? I'm like, um, yes. So um, they also believe they are indigenous to Vassar. They continue to say this because they were born here. So um, they may be the only people truly indigenous to the campus, which is a whole different story. But so we start day one. And there are a lot of really interesting studies in infancy and early childhood that you can take the same baby and put it in a blue onesie or a pink onesie and have people speak to it completely differently. Um, and that sets us up. From day one, we say things like, oh, look how big and strong you are if it's a boy. You put the same baby in a pink onesie and people are like, oh, you're such a little delicate thing. The exact same baby two hours later has not become significantly more delicate. Are you going to be a ballet dancer? All these kinds of things. So early on, from day one, you're kind of getting bombarded with subtle messages. But there's a really big difference between gender at this age and gender in the population that I spend a lot of time with, teenagers. And it comes down to this. You have a penis. So this, this is my goddaughter, Piper, and her good friend, Caleb. And you might be able to tell they've been doing a little bit of painting. And so um, her dad is a stay-at-home dad and decided the best way to clean them up was to take them out in the backyard and turn on the hose. And this is, it's August, it's Massachusetts, but it's well water. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with well water. It's, that's right, it is cold. So he turns on the hose, which will become ironic shortly, um, turns on the hose and is squirting them and they're shrieking and running back and forth and having a blast. Now, they're both about three. Caleb is potty trained. Piper's not potty trained quite yet, so she still has a pull up on. Now, any parents in the room, do you know what happens when one of these guys gets really wet? <laughs> Yes, it weighs a lot. So she was like, oh, forget this, and just like takes the pull-up off. And, he's, and her, her friend says, is like, oh, great, naked time. So he takes his underwear off, and the two of them are running back and forth, running back and forth. Now, she has an older sister, no brothers. He has a brother, no sisters. So all of a sudden, she stops, cold in her tracks, as they're kind of going back and forth, and goes, oh, you, you have a penis. <laughs> and he looks down at himself and he's like, and looks at me and goes, You don't have a penis. And then I feel this elbow in my side really hard from her father who's holding the hose, hence the irony, um, and says to me, Okay, Harvard psychologist, what do we do now? And I wasn't a mother yet at the time, which wouldn't have helped anyway, but I, um, I said what any incredibly intelligent person would say. Well, let's see what happens next. Um, and for those of you who have raised children, when they're three or four years old, what do you think happened next? Nothing. You just said perfectly. Nothing. They went back to running and shrieking. This has no meaning. It was it's almost as if she said, oh, you're a brunette. And he was like, you're blonde. OK, fact of life. Now, what happens among my people, the people I study, the point of puberty, puberty is the biology of what happens. Puberty throws you into the dating game. 
It makes you reproductively viable. That's the whole point. So it is a biological event. And the hormones and changes that accompany that don't start until you hit a certain body mass index. So until you have enough surplus energy to make another person, whether you're male or female, the stuff that it takes to make another person is costly energetically. So puberty is a biological phenomenon that will happen to nearly everyone, typically. Adolescence, which is, my, which is the area I'm really interested in, is actually the social, cultural, emotional construction or filter of this, output of this. Um, and if you're going to look at the way that people become who they are, if you're going to study development, you need to understand both. You need to understand there are certain biological processes that are somewhat inherent in people. Um, not always, and that's part of what we're going to touch on. But to understand how this biology might bubble up through an individual's environment or their context is actually going to help you really understand sort of who they are and what they're about.